What's up, guys? What's up? So we just got back from the TV shootout, and we came back with the winner of the TV shootout, the Sony A9G. This is big boy right it here. It is big boy. So I'm gonna have Patrick. He's gonna unbox it. Then we're gonna set it up. We're gonna go over a few of the settings, and uh, we'll give you our thoughts on what we think about it. Wait, wait, wait! I get to unbox. Yes. I'm gonna film you unbox it because I'm not gonna do. It. Yes. I'm gonna get to unbox something. <laughs> The Sony A9G retails for $37.99 at the time of this video, and it was recently crowned the king of TV for 2019 is Sony's A9G. So inside the box we get the TV base, which is just a heavy slab of metal, and for those wondering, the base is 10 inches deep. This plastic piece here is one of the covers that attaches to the back of the TV to hide wires. Spoiler alert, you get a bunch of these. This here is the newly designed remote control. It's a nice change and a lot slimmer than the older Sony remotes. I told you we're gonna have more plastic covers and more plastic covers and some documentation. This here is the mounting bracket for the TV stand. Just a heads up, the A9G weighs 54 pounds, so you might wanna grab a helping hand when moving this around. If you're gonna use the included stand, Grab the mounting bracket and screws and lay the brackets on the base, screwing in two screws per side. Make sure you double check that these are securely attached. Next, you're gonna slide the completed base in the bottom of the TV. Grab the other four Phillips head screws and screw down the base to the A9G. Two screws per side and you're done. As you can see, like last year's A8F, you get that low profile stance. There's also two microphones up front for hands-free Google voice commands, so you don't have to hit the microphone button on the remote if you don't want to. Now those of you that hated that tilt back the Sony A1E had should know the A9G does have a very slight backwards tilt too. It's just not as dramatic as the A1E. The A9G is only 1 and 5 8 inches deep and stands 32 and 7 8 inches high and it's also 57 inches wide. And just like Sony's other OLEDs, it has the Acoustic Surface Plus. So sound will emanate from out of the screen in a two-channel setup. Keep in mind, for some reason, the A9G only has two speakers up front, whereas the A9F from last year had three channels. So the A9F had a dedicated center channel along with the left and right speakers. So the speaker system in the A9G is definitely a step backwards. It's a good thing they're charging you that premium price for this downgrade, I mean, uh, upgrade. At least one good feature in the audio department from last year got carried over. You still have the ability to use the TV as a center channel speaker using the center channel input. They also saw fit to upgrade the gold-plated binding posts to plastic spring clips. Nice job, Sony. For other inputs, you have an IR in, composite in, 3.5mm out, two USB inputs, and a single HDMI input on the right side of the TV. On the bottom are connections for coax, LAN, optical out, RS-232 in, and three HDMI ins with HDMI 3 supporting EARC. And there's one more USB input. On the back panel to go along with the two speakers are two subwoofers. The subwoofers are rated at 20 watts each and the speakers are rated at 10 watts each. As for the operating system, Sony has kept with the Android TV OS. And for me personally, I've always found Android to be the worst part of these TVs. It's always been so sluggish and frustrating to use. Navigation was just very slow, like all the time. I'm not sure what they did this year, but Android feels like a whole new beast. It's super fast and very responsive. Now I won't run through the whole Android OS because it hasn't changed all that much from last year. So I'll just run through some of the settings and some of the newest features. Let's first take a look at what version of Android we're on. And we're on Android 8.0. Okay, let's go back and check out some picture settings. Now you can see here we've got two custom pro settings. Custom Pro 1 is for nighttime viewing, and Custom Pro 2 is for daytime viewing. Both of these settings have been professionally ISF calibrated by the guys over at Value Electronics. So before I took the TV home, they went ahead and calibrated it for me. If you want to get yours done, I'll leave a link in the description down below to Value Electronics, or you can just call the number on your screen. Just let them know that we sent you, and they'll take extra good care of you. Here we have the usual standard picture presets. We get photos, graphics, game, cinema, standard, and vivid.
Let's go back down to custom and see if anything's new. We get an auto picture mode, which I would keep off. Brightness, color, light sensor, which adjusts the brightness of the TV according to your room's brightness. And let's go over and check out the advanced settings. A lot of this is going to be the same from the previous years. Advanced contrast enhancer is still here. Low, medium, high, and off. Here's peak luminance, which will brighten up the image for those HDR spectral highlights. You might want to play around with this according to what content you're watching. You get low, medium, high, and off. Here are the color settings. You get Expert 2, Expert 1, Warm, Neutral, and Cool. They left it on Expert 2, so I'm just going to keep it on that. Okay, under Advanced Color Temp, you have Gain Adjustments and 20 Point Gamma Adjustments. I wouldn't go around messing with this stuff unless you've got some measurement gear. I also wouldn't go around copying settings from the internet because you could actually make your TV worse by doing that. But hey, I'm no professional calibrator or TV reviewer, so what do I know? It's your TV. Alright, there's a live color setting if you want to get some more vividness out of your image. I would normally never use this, but you might like it. And we have some more color adjustments. Again, don't mess with this stuff unless you know what you're doing. Under clarity, sharpness is at a 50 for default. You can either soften it by going down or sharpen it by going up. Otherwise, just keep it at 50. Reality creation is basically just another image enhancement that's supposed to give the image more detail that's not there. Me personally, I wouldn't use it. Here are some noise reduction settings and the smooth gradation setting. Now if you keep your eye on the purple area here, you should be able to see the color gradients or color banding. As we move up from low, medium to high, you should see the gradations get smoother. I'd use this for maybe poor quality videos, but if you're going to use this on say a 4K Blu-ray, you will see some loss of very fine detail. Again, this is a personal preference kind of thing and something you'll have to play with. Here we have the motion flow settings. If you're a Sony user, this is to help you get rid of judder and give you smoother motion. Under clearness, this will use black frame insertion for smoother motion, but you may notice flicker if you're sensitive to it. And no, it doesn't look as bad as the camera's picking up. And then there's Cinemotion, which I'll just keep on auto for now. Next up are the HDR options. The A9G supports HDR10, HLG, or you can keep it off. It does support Dolby Vision as well. Just keep this one set to auto for normal usage. HDMI range, best to keep this on auto and the same for color space. Now if your TV is professionally calibrated, don't accidentally hit the reset button. Okay, let's jump out of this and just get a quick peek at the picture quality and jump into Voodoo. Best HDR movie I've seen this year would have to be Aquaman, so I'm going to stream that. As you can see here, Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos are supported in the Voodoo app. And another new thing I should mention is by hitting the settings button on the remote, you now get this quick settings bar that pops up from the bottom. So there is no more action button. Here you can change the Dolby Vision mode for either dark room viewing or bright room viewing. And if you want crazy colors, you can go with vivid. If the TV is just too bright, then you can adjust the brightness from here. Here's a few custom sound presets. Dolby Audio, Sports, Music, Cinema, Dialogue, and Standard. And even though it doesn't have a center channel like last year's TV did, this is still one of the best sounding TVs without having to get a soundbar. Now if you scroll to the end, you can add or subtract whatever options you want in the quick settings. Now I didn't mention that this TV doesn't have HDMI 
so there's no auto low latency mode or variable refresh rate like the new LGs. So if you're a gamer, you might want to go with an LG. However, after being at the TV shootout this year, I did find the LG's color to be yellower compared to the Sony. So as far as being accurate to the reference monitor, the Sony BVM300, the A9G was almost spot on. Therefore, if you're a real stickler for having the image look as close to what its intent was, then the Sony is going to be your best bet. I did find the LG C9 to be marginally brighter, but the A9G, at least to my eyes, had more depth and better contrast. The C9 seemed just a tad more washed out. Now, if they weren't side by side, I honestly would be happy with either one. But the fact that there was a reference that the TVs had to reach, I'm sure there might be a good chance that if you were there too, you probably would have chosen the Sony as well. Of course, we all have our desired preferences for what we think looks good. And if you prefer a bright, punchy, vivid picture rather than having an accurate, maybe even dull looking picture, then I would just say go with what you like. But these are just my quick thoughts on the TV and what I thought was some relevant settings to go over in this video. I'm going to go ahead and spend some more time with the A9G and I'll follow up in another video as things change. Now if you guys are in the market for a brand new TV, let us know down below in the comments what's on your shortlist and are you going to have it professionally calibrated. Thanks for watching, follow us on social media, and if you want to support the channel and get exclusive content and giveaways, then stop by our Patreon page. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys again in the next one.